breaking the news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. A reporter made headlines during Hurricane Ian for protecting her microphone with a condom. What's a condom, replied Nick Cannon. The stock market had a rough month. Some economists say it took more of a beating than the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee turns 60 today. Whatever you're getting him, it should probably be relaxed fit. It's 60 minutes meets gone in 60 seconds. Tune in tomorrow for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. They need to take that commercial about how concussions are down off the air for a while, huh? Good morning, I'm Rock 107's Prospector. After what happened to Miami Dolphin quarterback Tua Tugaviola in two successive games, the NFL is changing its concussion protocol. And some changes could go into effect as early as next week. Last Sunday, Tua got taken down during a game against the Buffalo Bills. And when he got up, he was unsteady on his feet. In fact, he started to stumble. He left the game, but he came back in later with the team claiming he just suffered a back injury. Well, then the Dolphins were in action just four days later on Thursday night against the Cincinnati Bengals. And Tua went down hard again. But this time, he ended up getting carted off the field in a stretcher. And a lot of people are coming down on the Dolphins for letting Tua back into Sunday's game. And the NFL Player Association fired the independent neurologist who helped clear him. In a statement this weekend, the NFL said changes are needed to, quote, enhance player safety. Word is one of those changes will not be letting any player back into a game if he demonstrates any instability, which is probably a good step. On the plus side, officials say Tua is recovering from his latest injury. They know this because he almost spelled his last name correctly. Let's now go to the NFL Concussion Protocol press conference. Stepping up to the microphone right now is the NFL Player Association representative for multiple concussions. The fall down, bam, bam, boo, boo, owie. Da. Seeing all the devastation due to Ian, it just got me thinking, man. I don't have it. I'm not ready. Good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. I don't have an emergency preparedness kit. I don't even have anything in my car. If I simply break down on the side of the road, I got to pick up the phone and call somebody. Some people, they plan for every contingency, every possible scenario. Others, seemingly like me, fly by the seat of our pants. So I want to know if you have an emergency preparedness kit or anything of the sort ready. That's what I'm talking about this morning. And on to the rock lines we go. Rock 107. Hey, Prospector. Yo. I can tell you I'm ready, brother. Yeah. I even got a crank up radio. <laughs> so you got the crank up radio. So you got, uh, you know, weather news information, all that stuff. What else do you have? I got, I got cooking utensils, lots of, lots of goodies. <laughs> You're not messing around, huh? Oh no, no. I'm an old, I'm an old school camper. So I have everything. <laughs> Melissa on facebookcom slash prospector says, "My daughter has three survival kits and a car emergency kit. She's currently putting together a FEMA survival kit plus five first aid kits. I guess we're prepared, huh?" Joe says, "I don't even have a spare tire in any of the cars, and we've got five. On to the rock lines. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you have an emergency preparedness kit? Dave from Wyoming, what's up? Ever since I don't even know how old and I own my own vehicle, I've always had a box. I've got a complete change of clothes. I got soup in a can. I got two bottles of water. I got the pills that I take. Yeah. There's money in there depending, you know, like if I run short or whatever. Sometimes there's a $20 bill. Sometimes there's a $50 bill. Right. Everything I've ever, like, to just take off or whatever and get lost in, in space. For 48 hours, I can do it. Christina says, roadside kit in the trunk, a couple of containers of food with a 30-plus year supply of shelf life, rather, uh, propane, wood, tent, emergency towels that hydrate and water, and, of course, firearms and ammo. Matthew says, I got a backpack in my car all the time. I have everything from small packs of silicone dry clothes to rain ponchos, uh, munchies, stuff to hold us over for a day or two, and our daily set of meds, plus a small welter, water filter and canister, matches, lighter, extra batteries and a flashlight, cell phone accessories, and an extra battery charger. Out of the rock lines, Chris from Lake Ariel. Are you ready for an emergency, buddy? Rock 107. Yeah, prospector. Yo. Call me, call me a fool, buddy. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I ain't. I'm flying by the seat of my pants, too. <laughs> if it all falls apart tomorrow, you and I are doomed, man. Well, we could at least get together and try to to make it. Ralph checking in on the rock lines. He's got a foolproof plan, I think. Rock 107. I just moved to here. Okay. That's it. That's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you moved. This is your emergency plan. Move to Northeast PA. And get out of the way and don't go east and west. And you got to go north earlier. That's it. Kevin says, I got a case of water, a battery jump pack if I need to jump somebody or I need to jump a stun gun and some common repair tools. And Ann says, of course I do. One for each family member, four home, and a pack in the cars in case we got to move quickly, plus the skills to survive in the wilderness. Hearing all you folks makes me realize this ever happens. If it all comes down, I'm doomed. Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time for the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. I remember thinking, how is this helping? Turns out it did help. A new ALS drug that was partially funded by the Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014 was just approved by the FDA. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Fact, one in five guys wears the same shirt to work three days a week. Fact, around 30% of men have two or three go-to shirts in their wardrobe. And with that in mind, Macy's introduces their complete fall catalog for men. And that concludes Macy's complete fall catalog for men. What's a yam bag? A fool, an idiot, a blockhead, a dunce, or an ignoramus. You know, a dullard, simpleton, or a clot, nitwit, dipstick, pea brain, mouth breather, or cretin. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Jam Bag of the Day, as decided by you at rock107.com. Here are the nominees. Nominee number one. Usually you get a free ride in the backseat of a police cruiser after you're arrested for a DUI, not before. Earlier this month, a friendly officer in Michigan gave an intoxicated man a ride home from an Oktoberfest event. But the guy didn't stay home. Just 90 minutes later, he was arrested for allegedly driving while intoxicated. It's unclear why he was driving. A different cop saw a vehicle moving slowly, and they pulled the driver over when the vehicle attempted to turn but drove up on a curb. Police conducted field sobriety tests and a breathalyzer test and then arrested the man for DUI. Nominee number two. Someone at Walgreens in Tulsa, Oklahoma, called the cops on Wednesday after they saw a guy illegally parked in a handicapped spot. Well, they called because of the parking spot, but also because he was sitting in his car smoking something they thought might be meth. The man's name is Logan Bacon, and he wasn't in the car by the time the cops got there, so they waited for him to come back. Once he did, he grabbed a handicapped placard off the floor of his car and showed it to them, but admitted it didn't actually belong to him. The cops ran his name and saw he was wanted on an outstanding warrant, so they arrested him and found a bag of white powder in his pocket. It sounds like he'd actually been smoking fentanyl in his car, not meth. While all that was going on, a woman he was with was busy stealing stuff from Walgreens. She ran off, but cops found her hiding nearby in a marijuana dispensary and arrested her too. Logan's facing charges for drug trafficking, possession of a controlled substance, and parking in a handicapped spot. And the winner is... The man who got a ride home from police and then hours later was arrested for drunk driving. They cut you a break, they helped you out, and you still blew it. You're the Yam Bag of the Day, and we'll move on to Friday's Yam Bag of the Week competition. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day, weekday mornings on Rock 107. Listen to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.